Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically wide receiver Deion Kane from Clemson. Uh, so we're going to get into his analytics profile, we're going to look at his production data, we're going to look at his athleticism data, and we're going to give an overall perspective on how he should be valued in this draft class based on analytics. And if you're new to the channel and you're new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So if you don't know what a market share data is and you don't know what explosive lower body strength, speed, or flexibility scores are, you can just go to the description and all the information will be there for him. Uh, so first off, when you get to Deion Kane's uh, production data. This is the big red flag with Deion Kane is that he did not have the best passing yardage mark share data. Uh, only had a 44.24 out of 100 production score, uh, which based on my data since the 1969 NFL draft class, uh, the vast majority of five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, and long-term starters um, had at least 85, 80, 68, and 58 in terms of their overall passing yardage mark share production data. Deion Kane is below all those thresholds, so it would be very, very unlikely uh, for Deion Kane to end up becoming a uh, multiple All-Pro and even a long-term starter based on his passing yards mark share production data score. Not only that, when you get to the averages at the position, so the average All-Pro score, the average Pro Bowl score, and the average starter score, uh, Deion Kane is significantly below average compared to what all All-Pro players typically score Pro Bowl players, and even starters. So this is the big sort of issue with Deion Kane is that he's just significantly below average when it comes to his overall production data. The only saving grace with him is his athleticism data. Um, had a 39 explosive lower body strength score, 88.62 speed score, and 82.68 flexibility score. Uh, based on my data since the 1999 NFL draft class, uh, the vast majority of, of multiple All-Pro slash Pro Bowl wide receivers had at least a 54 or higher athleticism trait, meaning that you only really really need to have one 54 or higher skill set. So it could be explosiveness, it could be speed, it could be flexibility. And in Deion Kane's case, he has two. He has speed and he has flexibility. Um, ex the explosion score wasn't exactly 54 or higher, but again, you only really need to have one score that's 54 or higher. Uh, but the bottom line is when it comes to Deion Kane is that you have a wide receiver here that has all pro slash pro bowl uh, athleticism traits without the production to match those traits. And we've seen this over and over and over again. We saw this with, with Martavis Bryant. We saw this with uh, Doro Green Beckham Jr. And again, these are just the, the production data for those guys. This, this is what Deion Kane is. Deion Kane is someone that in many ways just does not have the production indicative of a high quality NFL wide receiver, let alone long-term starter in the right system. Um, so I would avoid him, you know, in a high rounds as possible. Because again, this is a guy that has been sneaking into the first round. This is someone who people view as a day two pick. Based on data, I would not consider him to be a day one pick or even a day two pick. I think this is a day three level player. Maybe you get him in the fourth round. Maybe you get him in the fifth round because he has that those athleticism traits and you see what you might get with him. But bottom line is with Deion Kane, I don't see a high-quality NFL wide receiver based on his production data. He will be a guy that flashes. He will be a guy that goes into the preseason and has some great catches here and there. You know, He's going to be that type of guy because it's not like he doesn't have any talent at all. Um, but you do have to realize that this is someone that when it comes to long-term success – it's a little less likely that he'll be able to hit those outcomes based on his overall data. And if he does, you know, if he does prove the data wrong, then he proves the data wrong. Uh, but I just think overall he would be very, very risky as a player that you would take uh, as a top 100 player based on his production data. And, of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gymmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Uh, hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.